Joe Biden's budget proposal for 2025 was recently released, and it contains some massive tax increases that would go into effect very soon. I have to say that this budget proposal is the scariest document I have ever read issued by the government. You need to pay attention to this. I think that with all the craziness going on in the world, that Joe Biden thinks he can just slip this through without anyone noticing. Not on my watch, he won't. As an accountant, I read all these boring tax reports so that you don't have to. I'm gonna be breaking down everything that you need to know. Today we're talking about the budget proposal for 2025, specifically about tax increases. The first thing you need to understand is that when I say 2025, I'm talking about fiscal year 2025 for the US government. The US starts their fiscal year in October. The way this works is the president submits a budget proposal and then Congress starts voting on it this month. That way, it can be approved in time for the budget to go into effect in five months. Do not fall for the trap of thinking that if you don't like this proposal, that you can just vote Joe Biden out of office. Because this would go into effect three months before Joe Biden's term ends. This fight over your taxes is going to happen before the election in November. Let me just repeat so you understand you are potentially going to have the biggest tax increase in your lifetime in five months. Before we jump into the details of this tax plan, I wanna give you just one example that shows how crooked this plan is. When Joe Biden released the budget proposal, he posted this press release. It's a long statement going over the benefits of his plan. In one section, he talks about a new billionaire tax. The heading of the section reads, the plan requires billionaires to pay at least 25% of income in taxes. So you might think that he has a proposal to make billionaires pay more tax. It turns out, that is a lie. He is just labeling it a billionaire's tax to make it sound better, but it's really on many more people besides just billionaires. If you read the paragraph, it says, the president's budget includes a 25% minimum tax on those with wealth of more than $100 million. That's quite a bit different from a billionaire tax. The government is going to look at everyone's net worth that they have accumulated over their entire lifespan. Anyone whose net worth exceeds $100 million pays more tax. It's not a tax on billionaires. That is a big lie that is exposed within the same paragraph. Now, I know that some of you are saying, I don't have $100 million. Why do I care about this? You should care because if he's lying about this, what else is he lying about in this plan? There are definitely things that will affect you no matter what your income is. I believe that the reason for these lies is that this tax plan hides something very sinister. You need to understand where this tax plan comes from. Last year, a report was released from the US Treasury called Disparities in the Benefits of Tax Expenditures by Race and Ethnicity. This was a study looking at how we should design taxes based on DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. What they did was they went through the entire tax code and they figured out how different taxes affect different racial groups. The conclusion of this study is that the tax code is racist. They claim that certain elements of the tax code benefit white people more than black and Hispanic people. What's confusing to me is that the racial categories they chose in the study are highly selective because for some reason, they did not mention Asians. They further recommend that the tax code be rewritten with the goal of raising taxes on white people. This would be an underhanded way the government could take money from one racial group and give it to another. This is horrible. This paper should have no place in government. They are saying that we should tax people based on the color of their skin. 
If you think I'm exaggerating, go read the paper for yourself. It is very explicit about what they are trying to do. I thought this was against the Constitution. But no, if you look at Joe Biden's tax plan, you will see that the entire plan is based on the Treasury paper on DEI from last year. Joe Biden's plan is designed to tax white people. I can't even begin to explain how immoral this paper is. Taxes should be based on things like encouraging business and growth and the economy and opportunities. It should have nothing to do with the color of your skin. So what is in Joe Biden's tax plan? A whole lot of tax increases. Let's start with capital gains tax. Currently, if you hold a stock for over a year and you sell it, usually you will pay 15% capital gains tax. Under Joe Biden's new plan, you could be paying as much as 44.6% capital gains tax. That's an increase from 15% to 44.6%. It gets even worse because some states have their own state capital gains tax. Here is how high the rate could be in California, New Jersey, Oregon, and Minnesota. You will pay almost 60% tax on capital gains if you live in California. It boggles my mind why anyone would still live there. There are a couple of groups this is really going to hurt. Number one is retirees. This will be devastating for people who have retired. If you have worked your entire life and saved for your retirement in a 401k plan or something where your taxes are deferred, when you are retired and pulling money out of that plan, you could have to pay 44.6% tax. That's pretty shocking when it would have been a 15% tax. I don't know how retirees are going to live. They're on a fixed income. Joe Biden is going to retirees and telling them they are paying more taxes. Even if you're relying on some other form of investment like a pension plan, this is still going to affect you. Whoever is managing the investments in the pension plan fund is going to have to pay this tax, and your pension plan is going to become underfunded really quickly. Number two is stock traders. If you buy and sell your own investments, you're going to have to pay more tax. Before it would have been 15%, now it could be as high as 44.6% tax. Number three is business owners. This is the biggest one. If you start a business with some small amount of money, say $1,000, and let's say you run that business for 10 years, let's also say the business becomes incredibly successful and you sell it after 10 years for $100 million. That's all capital gains. Before, you would have had to pay 15% to the government. Now the government is demanding 44.6% tax. Almost half of your hard-earned sweat over the last 10 years is going to the government. That's so screwed up. And if you were counting on that money to retire on, you can kiss your retirement goodbye. Now, if you think all of that is bad, it gets even worse. Joe Biden's tax plan includes a 25% tax on unrecognized capital gains. So even if you do not sell your stocks and you do not sell the business, you will still have to pay tax if it has gone up in value at all. So back to our example of owning a business worth $100 million that is almost all capital gains. You will receive a tax bill for $25 million payable immediately. You will be forced to declare bankruptcy and liquidate your business just to pay your tax bill. The same thing with stocks. If any of your stocks have gone up in value, you will receive a tax bill for 25% of that increase, even if you have not sold them. So you are going to be forced to sell stock just to pay your taxes. What's even worse is there's no benefit to you if your stocks go down in value. It's not like you get a tax credit. So if your stocks go up, the government gets the benefit, but if you lose money and your stocks go down, you carry the loss. How is that fair? 
This is going to destroy the economy. People are going to stop investing in the stock market. People are going to stop building businesses. People are going to go bankrupt. The point of a low capital gains tax is it makes it easy to find investment dollars. It's an incentive for people to invest. If taxes discourage investment, the economy dries up. Now, some analysts are saying that Joe Biden doesn't really mean everything he's proposing. They suggest that these tax policies are in here just to scare people as some kind of bargaining tactic during budget negotiations in Congress. If that's true, that's still horrible. If they're trying to scare me, it's working. These proposals should not even be on the table for the U.S. economy. Since they're based on DEI, I'm pretty sure they're illegal under the Constitution. What else is included in Joe Biden's tax plan? He's increasing death taxes. So even if you were to die, you still have to pay more taxes under Joe Biden. Previously, if you were to receive inheritance, for example, a family home, the basis of that asset would be stepped up to the fair market value at the time of death. You would not pay taxes on that. This will no longer be the case. The death would be a recognizable event for tax purposes, and that house would become a capital gain. So if you receive that house, on top of losing your loved one, you would receive a tax bill for 44.6% tax, which means you would have to sell the house just to pay the taxes. If you thought you would be able to live in that house as your inheritance, you better think again. Now, I know that some people will point out that 44.6% is only for the highest income taxpayers, but I'm warning you that it kicks in sooner than you think. It looks to me like the threshold for the highest income bracket for 2025 is $500,000. Well, if you're receiving a house for inheritance, that's now income under the new rules. It's not uncommon for a house to be worth more than $500,000. It's going to be more common than you think for everyday Americans to find themselves in situations where they are paying the highest tax rates. Something else in Joe Biden's tax plan is the removal of the carried interest exemption. This is a loophole in the tax code that hedge fund managers get their compensation taxed as capital gains instead of wages. They are paid from profits of their investments gaining in value. This currently gives them a tax break. People don't like this because why should we give hedge fund managers a tax break? But the reason we give them a tax break is because we want to incentivize hedge funds to invest in the economy. Investment dollars can move to any location. If we raise taxes on hedge funds to 44.6% tax, you will hear a giant sucking sound as all those hedge funds move their investments out of the United States. Joe Biden's next tax increase is on real estate. This could potentially be the worst impact of them all. Joe Biden proposes eliminating what is called the 1031 exchanges. Most people don't know about this unless you're in real estate. This is a tax loophole where instead of selling your property, you trade it with someone else. This is often done with apartment buildings. If you're doing a swap, it's not counted as a capital gain because the money is still in the building. You can keep swapping buildings your entire career and never pay capital gains until you finally sell it at the end. Joe Biden will eliminate those swaps, which means that all the unrecognized gains that have been building up for decades would immediately become due at the 25% tax. And any future exchanges would result in the 44.6% tax. Just like the stock market, the real estate market would dry up overnight. No one would be selling their property because they would not want to be taxed. This would be devastating. I have read Joe Biden's tax plan over and over again, and I cannot believe what a stupid idea this is. This is coming from the president of the United States. Has he lost his mind? 
All of these proposals are devastating and would destroy the country. Why would he do this three months before the end of his term? Let me explain what I think is driving all of this. Here's a chart of government spending. Here you can see what happened when Donald Trump was president. This is what happened when Joe Biden was president. Obviously, we had the health crisis in 2020, where the government spent enormous amounts of money. But instead of returning back to the spending levels from 2019, the government just decided, you know what? We're going to just keep spending at this higher rate. Joe Biden's tax plan to raise taxes on all of us is because he's trying to cover this higher spending. How about we just go back to how things were in 2019? We would not have to raise taxes on anybody. So here's my idea. Instead of raising taxes, how about we just cut the government? Because the real problem here is that government spending is out of control. I want to emphasize this again. You cannot wait until the next presidential election to voice your opinion on this. The real decisions about taxes in 2025 are happening right now this month. I will tell you that for me personally, I wrote my congressperson an email about this, and I urge you to do the same. I've never actually written my congressperson before. That's how horrible this situation is. This is the first time I have ever written my congressperson. Every congressperson has a website you can go to where you can just email them directly. So I just wrote an email saying, I heard about Joe Biden's horrible proposals to raise taxes. Please do not let this happen or I will vote you out of office. It's just a simple message letting them know you are paying attention you would be surprised at how much of an impact your message can make. Now I want to hear from you. What do you think of Joe Biden's tax plan? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. If you like these videos, consider signing up for a monthly membership on my website, wolvesandfinance.com. For $6 a month, you help me to keep putting out these videos. Also, for channel members, I'm releasing a new version of the website this Friday, so keep on the lookout for that. I'm Zach from Wolves and Finance. Thank you for watching.